Hey guys, Spiker. Uh, just a quick little video here. Um, what I have going on is a B series transmission B16 that broke fourth gear. Uh, it's in for a Gear X top eliminator set. Um, it already had an M Factory LSD in it, uh, so I checked the, the I checked the clearance on the diff. Everything's good, so we're not going to address this. This is just about input shaft and blade, which is very important with any gear set that you buy. Even the quote unquote drop in stuff, you should really be checking all this. So what you want to do is assemble your input shaft with the bottom cone washer um, in the shim, right? Have it in the transmission. Um, have everything built up, all distance collars. You don't even have to have the gears on it, but you do need all the distance collars. I just happen to have this all stuffed together. Um, so I'm going to run it like this. The next thing you want to do is A, make sure that the case is just cleaner and crappy. Should be, everything should be clean. Everything should be good. Assuming you're there. We're going to put the gear set in. We're going to take this, the stopping ring and point at tw directly 12 o'clock at the very top bolt hole here, right underneath the vent. And then you want to make sure to have your, make sure this doesn't fall. Take the shim out of the end of the input shaft bearing bore. Use a caliper or a mic. I, I'm just going to use my caliper because that's probably what everybody's going to have. But anyway, you just want to measure it. And I do them in thousandths of an inch. This one is 53 thousandths of an inch. So what I'll do is make sure the oil director down here is in his little pocket in the middle. Because if you take the shim and you shove it back down in the hole and it's off, it'll hold everything up and you'll get a false reading or a completely um, bound up setup. So then you put the shim in, stick it back there in the bore, make sure the plastic director stays in the same place. Just take a screwdriver or something, tap her down, make sure it's all the way flush. What I like to do also is I will take the measurement I get on that shim and I will write a number one so I know it's the, where we start with how thick it is on the bottom of the case somewhere. Again, make sure um, everything is lined up as far as the braking ring being with the, tit with the uh, tab straight up. Um, I have this cuff on because I'm lazy. I'm just going to leave this on here for now, but this won't usually be a deal because you should be doing this only with the input shaft. You should not do the whole gear set. After you do all that, get the end case set up. I'm gonna make sure this cuff doesn't bind me up here because I, like I said, I'm lazy. Okay, I didn't plan on doing this tonight. All right, here we go. We don't have to worry about the spring clip because there's no counter shaft in it, and we are just going to give the um, two case bolts in opposite corners just a snug. The biggie doesn't have to be really tight. Doesn't have to be torqued for what we're doing here. Okay, so I'm gonna flip her over, give her a little wing, and I get, they should be pretty close. At least these gear sets are always very close. But what you're looking to do is see how it feels. Feels good, it spins over. So we're set up to, to take a measurement. Now the next thing we're gonna do is just take a dead blow, get the input shaft a couple of wax there, make sure it's sitting all the way against the back. And, <clears throat> An input shaft, uh, input shaft thrust tool is invaluable at this point. If you're doing transmissions, you should really have one, especially if you do a lot of them, especially high dollar dog boxes or even stuff like this that's, you know, your guys will have between five and seven or $15,000 in these things. And the process is that you put this on first on the input shaft, just off of the, off of the snout of the case. And then you're going to tighten the two Allen bolts this is a brand new one because I sold my last one to somebody before I got a new batch. Right. Tighten these two Allen um, bolts up on the top over. And once you get that done, you don't want it to move. You don't want it to be able to pull at all. So you don't have to reef on it, but definitely, you know, tighten it down. And then if you're looking for one of these tools, I have them on my website. Um, they're really invaluable to have. Again, give it a little tap to make sure she shoved all the way against the back because what we're going to do is measure our pull into the spring. The Honda and, Ch and, uh, and Helms manual tell you to do it a different way. It's a waste of time. There's a step that they, there's a couple steps they have to do all this measure. You really don't have to. All you really care is about the thrust into the washer and the spec that you put it at. So you can go through all that if you like, but you're going to be double checking your work anyway. Basically, we're skipping and just going straight to double check, but we're just going to start like we're double checking. <laughs> piece of angle iron with a little hole cut in it, drilled rather, and all I do there is, I'm going to spin this around so I can get at it, all you do there is tighten this, attach this angle iron to it, this is how I do it, you can get like wire or vice grips that have um, 
you know, holders for dial gauges. And then we're gonna take our dial gauge, again, make sure she's tapped in there, that's important. Set our dial gauge up on the end of the shaft. And we're gonna zero it out. This thing is very tight for some reason. Okay, and on, on a synchronous setup, I think uh, OEM is like four to eight or something. I like to run them, you know, anywhere in the OEM range from four to like eight for a synchro set, um, for a uh, synchro helical set, uh, a dog box, something straight cut. I'll run them loose. I, I won't tell you where I go with them. I don't want to, you know, it's just kind of proprietary, but I do run them looser. You can get away with more because there's not as much of an axle load. So once you have this all zeroed out and you're good to go, you're going to take the Allen wrench, put a bar behind this tool that we have set up on here and we are going to take the bigger allen wrench and then we are going to tighten this screw if you guys can see i'll turn it around here in a second so everything's all zeroed out we got the screw here we got our allen wrench and we're going to twist this and it's going to pull into the case and we're going to see what we get on the dial indicator so this one has a 53 thousandths shim in it i'll pick you up here and we get 12 thou of play. That's about four thou out from where I wanna be on this particular deal. So what I wanna do then is, okay, so I wanna tighten it up. So I have 53 in there, I'm four from where I wanna be, I wanna add four, I'm gonna look for a 57 thousand shim, take it apart, put it back together, repeat the process, verify that I'm at about eight thou, seven or eight, you know, and, um, and send it, and that's it. Uh, again, on the dog box, it's a little bit different, but the pro, you know, the specs are a little different where I like to run them, but this is a good place to be just for a quick understanding how to use the tool and set up your input shaft and play. Hope it helps. Thank you.